What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know I haven't been posting in definitely all of July because I was doing some military training. If you guys are on the reserves or if you don't know, it's called annual training where you go two weeks out of the month, but in reality it takes like three and a half. So I already knew that was coming up. Uh, that's why I busted so hard on the Challenger before I left to get a bunch of stuff done. And for the most part, it's ready. Uh, it's about ready to be taken back to Color House of Texas so he can cut and buff the paint. And then from there, we'll take it to Ish Window Tint so we can lay down some new carbon fiber stripes. I need to get with Sinister Designs and pick up all my sponsor decals and put all those on the car as well. Uh, so we're almost there. And all this is in lieu of We Are Mopar. Uh, that's coming up the first weekend of September, Labor Day weekend. And if you guys don't know, uh, for that event, we will be giving ride-alongs in the Challenger. Uh, partnering with BF Goodrich Tires and We Are Mopar, they reached out to me and said, hey, uh, are you willing to get ride-alongs in your car and show people what a set of these tires can do for their Mopar? And I said, absolutely, because I am a huge believer, as you can see, in BF Goodrich Tires. So we're going to not waste too much time. This should take about 10 minutes. I'm sure you guys what we're doing today. All right, as you guys can see, the Challenger's put together. Uh, one of the last things I got to do is put in the harnesses. I did take them out when I cleaned out the interior. And I need to fix this little bit of fitment right here. This little gap on this. Um, I'm really not sure why it's not sticking, but I'm gonna go ahead and figure something out. And next thing we're gonna do is wire the LED side markers that come with Hellcats, Demons, and wide body scat packs. And I'm gonna show you how we do that right here. All right, so the first thing we got laid out here is the pre-2015 wiring harness for the side markers and fog lights. Now, changing to the Hellcat front bumper, there are no fog lights anymore. So we don't have to worry about this. I'm not gonna cut it or anything, just gonna leave it just like that. Um, so this is what it normally looks like. And basically, you need this plug to go into the LED side marker. So I've already figured it out, how to wire it up. And this is the part number that you need to pick up. Where is it? Right here. 6825-9673-AB-001. They're about $80 and you can find them on eBay. If you just type in Mopar and then the part number, it should pop right up. So what you gotta do is cut off this pigtail, right? It doesn't really matter how close you cut this one, but when you cut the one off the harness, you wanna make sure you leave off the 2015 Hellcat harness. You wanna make sure you leave enough wire uh, so you can go ahead and put these wires together. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the other uh, pigtail off and go ahead and connect the wires to the uh, pre-2015 harness. And then we're gonna go ahead and solder everything up uh, and then install it back into the Challenger. And then I'm gonna remove that little flare and fix that fitment issue I got. All right, before I keep going, I wanna show you guys that yes, it actually does work. Uh, the way you wanna connect it is you've got on the 2015 harness, this white and brown wire, you're gonna connect it to your pre-2015 uh, purple and white and then this second wire on the Hellcat harness one it looks like it's a black and gray almost like a dark blue color you're going to connect that to the black and white on your pre-2015 harness and the second purple and white you don't need it uh, make sure you put some of this heat shrink on before you solder that because then you can't put it back on so i need to move this over there but i just want to show you guys that it does work with the lights on. So all we gotta do now is put the heat shrink on the right wire, solder this up, and do the same thing on the uh, driver's side and we're good to go. All right guys, look at me. Nothing went according to plan, but I already figured it out. All right, so this one, we've got power and ground basically, right? Over here on the driver's side, it should be the same thing, power and ground. But for whatever reason, uh, my ground is good, but my power is not good. There's no voltage coming out of there. But when I hook it up to this one over here, it lights up. So right now I've got this light on. If I connect these two right here, this one does not light up. But if I simply touch these two together, it lights up. Lastly, if I put black to black, and then I put the white to the white and purple over here, it lights up. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get a piece of wire and pretty much jump it from here, follow the harness so I have the correct length to come all the way over here. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right guys, it wasn't too difficult. I just added that jumper wire. Now both 
uh, turn signals work. So let me go ahead and stretch this out so you can see it real quick. All right, my battery was dying, so passenger side, power ground, then the jumper cable. Goes over to this one for power and ground. They both work. Turn the lights off. I need to ride this car more often. So anyways, if it didn't pick up, just in case, you've got your ground, you got your power, and you got your jump wire. I measured it so it goes across the harness. We're gonna tape it all together. Going to this one, and then you've got your ground. Disregard this power, and disregard this wire. So now we've got to solder everything and clean everything up, and we'll have a nice solid harness. All right, guys, so I went ahead and uh, I soldered everything up. As you can see, it looks like a nice clean harness now. Everything's nice and clean. And all you gotta do is put these uh, reflectors back in, uh, tuck up your wiring harness. Honestly, my car is so different now, I don't even remember where the harness goes. But that's what I'm gonna do now. But before I put this harness in, I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this uh, little flare right here, since that's, that's really bugging me. So I'm gonna do that, and then the last thing I'll do is put in the reflectors, the harness, and my last splitter support rod. Got that in the mail. And uh, the front end will be done. It should be ready for a nice wash. All right, guys. So I went ahead and wrapped everything up. Uh, I didn't really film a lot of it because it was just kind of uh, just kind of boring stuff. Nothing really important um, other than just tightening stuff up, replacing some brackets, replacing some bolts. Uh, so nothing really too important. So it was all kind of boring. But here's the car. It's looking nice. Got that second. Uh, splitter support rod on there on the front got everything tightened up the rear diffuser i was missing two brackets and two uh two bolts and hardware so i went ahead and put that on there so everything's nice and sturdy now it was in the middle as you can see it's not going anywhere now so the car is pretty much done i need to go ahead and put the um harnesses in uh but it's just so freaking hot and then when you get inside the car it's like it's way hotter uh, so I'm gonna wait to do that later this evening and or I might just do it tomorrow actually and I just noticed there's one more thing I got to do um, let me show you all right as I was talking I just took a look up here at the roof I forgot that I need to get the new weather strips last time I went to Dodge to order them they were all in back order because there was a huge hailstorm that came through Central Texas and a lot of those parts had already been uh, snagged up to do some roof repairs all right, so since the car is almost done, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a walk around. Again, the only thing that's really missing here is the weather strips on the roof and the harnesses from Status Racing inside the car. Other than that, car is pretty much complete. I'm waiting on a fresh set of BF Goodrich tires so I can throw those onto these wheels. I got my spare wheels right here with BFGs on them as well. Once I get the new set, we'll mount them on and we'll be taking two sets of BFGs with us too. Uh, we are Mopar for the autocross. These are close to being cooked, so I'm gonna run these first ones. And then uh, once I smoke those, we'll go ahead and swap the uh, new ones on. So I just wanna make sure I have plenty of tire when we go out to We Are Mopar. Um, so anyways, let me give you guys a walk around of the car now that it's complete.
right, guys, you can see I'm here in my spot. Who did that? I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, I'm in my spot. Give you guys a clean walk around of the Challenger. Has been washed uh, and over the last month and a half. I picked it up from paint, put it all together, and today I just finished tightening everything up. Um, put the new steering wheel in, got everything inside cleaned out, rear diffuser back on, front slitter back on. OEM wide body kit is on the entire way. And uh, basically, to complete my look, we're just missing uh, some stripes. And then she'll be, she'll be good to go, she'll be done. And we're, uh, we're pretty much ready for We Are Mopar. So now, I'm gonna drive back home, but I'm gonna address some questions that I keep getting, uh, usually in the comments section. Uh, some pretty common ones include, park and brake. Some pretty common ones always include, why don't I change out the headlights to the 2015 and up headlights? Um, and I've said it a few times already, uh, the cost of the headlights being close to $1,400 plus the adaptive harness and then installing them. Um, and the same thing with the rear tail lights, the cost of the rear tail lights, the new rear bumper, finishing off the rear flares. Uh, the cost of that, I can't really justify it. I've priced it out and it's not really what I'm going after. I've said it a million times, it's not a Hellcat clone, it's not a Demon clone, and it's not a Scat Pack wide body clone. That is not what I'm going for. Everything done to the cars had a purpose. Now, I know I've said that a few times as well. Maybe some of you guys are new to the channel and um, you missed that a little bit, but everything done to the car has a purpose, everything. Uh, when I started, we had heating issues. So I started looking at what kind of hoods could I get to extract some heat, boom, Hellcat hood. Uh, we went ahead and did some tests and it was a 13 degree difference in heat. I kept blowing power steering pumps at the autocross and we needed to get heat out. Then came down to uh, keeping oil temp down and engine temps down because even though we had a 13 degree difference, it is still very hot. And as you guys know, heat kills horsepower, it kills parts, it heat kills everything. Um, especially when you start doing uh, road racing and you start hot lapping, uh, heat will completely destroy everything. So I got to looking at how to get more air into this. Now, if you guys know the front of the 09 Challenger SRT8 had one little grill at the very bottom for air. And of course, a top grill. But really, it was only getting about 25% of the upper radiator. So I started looking at the Hellcat front bumper. Uh, I think Dodge did an amazing job designing that front bumper to extract as much heat as possible and keep those oil coolers cool for the 700 horsepower Hellcat engine. So on top of blowing power steering pumps, keeping engine temps down, we added a power steering cooler to the front and it is right in front of one of those openings in the Hellcat bumper. And that's how we keep those temps down and we haven't blown a power steering pump since. So now we get to the topic of the wide body. How did I end up going wide body? So basically when I was building this car for the Optima, search for the Ultimate Street Car Series, the minimum tire is 200 tread wear, pretty sticky street tire. Now the problem with 200 tread wear tires is they don't really make a lot of them in a 20 inch wheel. Um, and then when you get to a 20 inch wheel, they don't really make them that wide. So the nature of the Challenger, it being a boat, it needs a lot of grip, especially in the front end to get that big heavy nose to turn, uh, especially on autocross or you know road racing. So. I started looking at, okay, what size do 200 tread wear tires come in? And they mainly come in like 18 inch wheels. So I was like, okay, cool. Start looking for 18 inch wheels. Couldn't find a wheel wide enough or a wheel that would clear the Brembo brakes without having to do like a custom three piece. And I wasn't about to drop another six grand on wheels. I had a set of Forge Line SOP3 three piece wheels before uh, when the car was narrow body and those were six grand. So I didn't want to spend that money. So one day I went to a Cars and Coffee and I was looking at a Dodge Demon and I was like, well, it's like Dodge figured it out, which is why I got the 18 inch Demon wheels. So I was able to get 315s all the way around, fit it on the car without any wheel fitment issues. Uh, but then the problem was that the wheels were wide, which is how we got to the wide body. Uh, so basically we just didn't want the wheels and tires sticking out um, because they didn't even clear the fenders. My car sits pretty low. And when you're going around a turn, as you know, you know, the weight transfer, the wheels were definitely gonna meet the uh, fenders, the tires were definitely gonna meet the fenders, which is why we went wide body. So again, everything's been done over the course of the last four years, but like I said, we're not making a, Dem a Demon clone, we're not making a Hellcat clone. Everything has been done to make this car handle. And uh, I think we've definitely achieved that. Yeah, it's got kind of the look, but at the end of the day, $2,000 headlights, $2,000 taillights, a new rear bumper, 
Uh, it doesn't make us go faster by any means. Um, it just makes the car look like a newer one. Same thing with the dash. I got a comment about switching out the dash to a 2015 and up. And again, changing the interior of this car doesn't make us go faster. So you start getting to price point. If this car was just a show car or just my weekend car, I might think about it or I'd probably just go buy a Hellcat wide body at this point. Um, but that money goes a long way when you're talking about travel expenses, um, you know, truck rental, trailer rental, entry fees, hotel, food, gas, and my favorite, if things break, gotta fix them. So that $4,000, $5,000 in cosmetic upgrades goes a really long way uh, out on the track. And I'm not saying that this conversion was cheap by any means, but it just got to the point where we needed something sturdier and the car already looked, listen, I get it on Instagram, it was a beautiful car, but in person it was pretty whooped. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I always said it, it's an Instagram worthy car, but aside from that, she's pretty whooped. So I've been being on it for the last three years and I figured, hey, it's time, let's clean it up, use the OEM parts as much as we can and uh, go from there. So that's it, rant over, rant over, just wanted to, uh, explain what this build is and uh get you guys up to speed as always i really appreciate you guys watching i appreciate your guys support i can't even put an amount of appreciation like it's, there's no numbers that can go to it um and you guys know what to do uh leave a comment below if you like these videos smash that like button if you love these videos hit that subscribe button until next time guys peace out